Hello and welcome once again to The Bike Show, which this week features some interesting news from the likes of BMW, KTM and MV Augusta, and another one of those outrageous Chinese copycat bikes that makes you wonder whether some of those manufacturers have any concept of shame, or indeed comprehend the difference between right and wrong. But before we get to that, I have a report from Germany where BMW has just launched the latest evolution of its R18. Beautiful weather, perfect for riding. Beautiful part of Germany as well. We're not too far outside the city of Frankfurt and I didn't realize this kind of countryside was around here. Love it. And here we have the R18B, brand new from BMW and... Well, you know, development of the R18. If you've been watching the show long enough, you know I don't really like cruisers, so... Uh... That will not stop me, of course, from evaluating this touring bagger version of the R18 as honestly as I can, even though a lifetime of American examples of the breed have done nothing much more than irritate me to the point of exasperation. Since so much of this segment of the market is about looks, about being seen and admired for your ride rather than the outright quality of the ride itself, let's start with the aesthetics. You've been looking at the bike as I ramble on, so you've already made up your own mind. For me, given the almost obligatory use of a batwing fairing and the bags, or panniers if you prefer, it actually looks pretty good. The closer you look, the better it gets. Excuse me, I have to interrupt here because I want to share a message from this video sponsor and it's one worth listening to for only a minute of your time because it might just change your life. I don't say that lightly but rather from experience because it has changed our lives. My wife in particular who now edits the show thanks to the expertise she learned via Skillshare. Wanting to change her career a couple of years ago from finance to something more rewarding, but not sure how to go about it, Skillshare offered her a fantastic range of options to explore her creative side. Everything from writing and photography through things like music and fine art, all the way to graphic design and animation. Once Jax had joined, become a member and sampled some of the classes, all of which she found inspiring, she settled on video editing with Ali Saunders, but hasn't yet explored what Skillshare has to offer about being in front of the camera, which is why I'm here doing the talking about her experience. We now work and travel together and it has been made possible by Skillshare and their online learning community that is designed to help you better use your creative side, which by the way, we all have. You don't have to want to do anything as drastic as Jack's and change the course of your life. It's a wonderful resource and partner for those who are keen hobbyists or for people who just want to explore their creative side a little more with the help of a community of creatives that feels exactly like you do. Okay, this is now more than a minute, but we feel strongly about Skillshare. They're always adding new classes and there are no ads. And obviously it's a resource that you can take with you wherever your travels might take you. So help yourself and help us at the same time by taking a look. The first thousand Bike Show subscribers using the link in the description below will receive a month's free trial of Skillshare. Do it, explore the potential within yourself and this wonderful online community. We did and we love it. You know BMW, they've built themselves a reputation based on engineering. It's always function over form. The bikes have got to perform. Well, the R18 takes that and kind of twists it a little bit. No one's saying that these bikes don't perform, but they're starting to think more now about how it looks. I mean, look at this beast of an engine, 1800cc boxer. What can't you see? Where's all the cabling? beautifully hidden away. It's only when you start to really look that you notice details like that. If the monstrous flat twin dominates the outside view of the bike, then from the rider's perspective, it's all about the cockpit. And it does feel a bit like the hot seat in an old biplane or something. Minus the huge and hugely impressive TFT screen, of course. 
It does everything you'd expect of a modern bike, short of making you a cup of tea, and it is framed by four traditional chrome clocks that you never look at since revs are irrelevant on an engine this big and the speed and fuel are displayed on the screen. The final instrument indicates power in reserve as a percentage and is an idea borrowed from Rolls-Royce. It is silly, but at least it has entertainment value. What I like is that they've carried this pinstriping through. Now this is part of their heritage line. It's how BMWs used to be 60, 70, 80 years ago. And you see it in the shape of the tank. This they've managed to keep. It's the teardrop tank with the pinstriping again. It's very subtle, but it's very BMW. There are plenty of examples of these links with the past, some of them bordering on the worryingly obsessive. Check out the badge. On the face of it, just a badge, but Okay, I'm going full nerd now, but this is exactly the same size badge as they used to be all those years ago on the original BMWs. The screws are exactly the same distance apart as they used to be. The screws are even exactly the same size. So in theory, you could go to your 1920s, 1930s BMW, take the badge off there, put it straight on there. I told you I was gonna be nerdy, but that kind of thing, I like it. You may not, but I guarantee you will like the quality of the sound that the Marshall system is capable of pumping out. Speakers in the Batwing fairing and in the bags help surround you with whatever rock and roll tunes the riding occasion demands. And so at this point, let's get down to the job of riding this big beast of a bike. And at almost 400 kilograms with a full tank of fuel, it most definitely is a big beast. This is actually the first time I've ridden the R18. Donovan went on the South African launch of the original, and now it's my turn. And I was sort of expecting the response I'm getting from the engine, but what I am not expecting, what has caught me completely by surprise is how can two massive pistons produce power that is so smooth? No, 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 no. It's not smooth, it's smooth. The engine and its 91 horsepower and 157 newton meters of torque may barely notice the nearly half ton of rider and bike, but like me, you are probably, understandably, thinking that the handling requires a leap of faith and maybe a dose of prayer to deal with anything resembling a corner. I've got to be honest, when they said we were coming down a load of twisty roads, I thought, why? This thing's meant for America, long straight highways. Why are you taking us down twisty roads? It's going to be unpleasant. It's going to be bouncy. Why? Well, I should have known better. They knew what they were talking about because, and I know we journalists talk about this all the time, ooh, the weight melts away once you get going, but it's not that it melts away, it actually sort of feels like quite a light bike. You can really throw it into a turn and, and just not use any effort. It's the mildest amount of input on the bars and the things lend right over. And combine that with the fact, thoughtfully, compared to the standard R18, there's about two or three degrees more possibility for leaning and I mean, don't tell the guys from America this, but it is possible to enjoy a bagger on a twisty road and enjoy the twisty road. After all, motorcycles are meant to be enjoyed where there are corners. And that's the thing that's always frustrated me about the American cruises, is that when I get somewhere interesting, when the road starts to flow and I want to flow with my bike, it just ain't happening. Because the thing's wearing bits and pieces off it everywhere we go. That's not to say that the R18B doesn't scrape, because it does, but nowhere near as easily as its competition, and the extra lean angle enables a significantly more enjoyable pace than you might have imagined possible from a bike like this. Okay, I found myself stuck behind a car. It's never a great place to be when you're on a lovely bit of mountain road. Now on a sport bike, you'd just nip past, wouldn't you? But I'm on a bagger, and I can't do that. Well. 
according to bagger law, according to cruiser law, I can't do that because as soon as I hit a corner, it all goes pear-shaped. Oh. <laughs> Irrespective of gear, you've got loads of punch. And I'm going to go for it again, I may regret this. Here we go. Look at this, right, left, wow, that's no effort, right again. Tightens, oh, okay, here we are scraping bits, so that's fine, decent lean angle. Covering distance in style and comfort is this bike's main purpose though, and although both are very subjective assessments, I'd say it has both elements covered. This sort of riding position with feet quite far forward and no weight taken by your wrists usually means you and your coccyx will soon fall out. The seat is excellent though. Admittedly, my 250 kilometers of riding was broken into smaller segments. I think it should be good though for a couple of hours at a time. Wind protection was pretty good also, but I am a riding sloucher, so if you have a straight back or you're six foot or taller, you might get a bit too much wind around your head. Yeah, okay. I apologize. I was a little bit grumpy this morning and I wasn't very professional because I wasn't approaching this new bike with the open mind that it deserved. But after about 250 kilometers of riding in beautiful weather along some stunning roads, I can say that the R18 bagger has truly surprised. In fact, a little bit more than surprised. It's astonished me. And it's astonished me because you know, I don't like to say this without riding other bikes back to back, but it's the best retro looking traditional heritage type bagger I've ever ridden, which is pretty good going considering how long some of the other guys have been at it. In fact, if I might be so bold, I think I might say that BMW has got the two best baggers in the world at the moment. Yeah, don't forget my own favorite, the K1600 bagger which is just so incredibly silly that it deserves to remain at the top of the tree. However, if you prefer a little bit of style over substance, this is the one for you. Yeah, on reflection, that might be a bit rich. Let's just say two of the best baggers in the world. I genuinely enjoyed my day with this new addition to the class. It put a smile on my face and that's the main thing, isn't it? The pricing might remove some of that smile though. It's difficult to assess for South Africa given we don't know what spec it will arrive in, but you have to think you'll probably be paying around a thousand rand per kilo. And this is very nearly a 400 kilo bike. Not that that's unexpected though. It's American competition has already set the pricing bar for this segment and they've never been exactly shy in that respect. I think dynamically it exceeded my expectations. Sure, it could handle even better with 17 inch wheels at both ends and more suspension travel at the rear, but then it wouldn't be an American style bagger, would it? This is the type of bike where looks and customer expectation are just as important as actual dynamic ability. If you don't care so much about your image and want a brilliant bike to tour the States, then get a K1600 GT or a R1250 RT. Tradition suggests that a manly manual gear change is what's required on a bagger, but if you're giving me a stunning TFT screen and onboard computer controls, then I'd like at least the option of an auto blipper gear change as well, please. A small range of adjustability, not necessarily electric, might also be useful to fine tune the wind protection. You need to connect your phone to get the best out of the technology and there's a handy tank mounted cubby hole for it and it's cooled by a fan. Seems though that the fan isn't efficient enough to deal with heat generated by wireless charging so that's not available, which is a bit of a shame. And the compartment isn't actually that big. Some people, including me, struggled or failed to get their wider or taller phones to fit. I am nitpicking now, but truth be told, even though I'm not a fan of this type of bike, the supposed professional in me, supposed I said, can see that this is an accomplished model, an excellent bagger with class leading build quality and attention to detail. If you simply must have an authentic American cruiser, then nothing will persuade you to jump ship to a European alternative. But if you want a bagger with 
a different backstory and a whole heap of technology, you might well be enticed by the BMW R18B. And I wouldn't blame you.